Hey, this is Vu, and today I wanted to get you out of silver as quickly as possible. I've watched a bunch of demos, taken notes, and I've boiled down what are the most common issues that are likely affecting you. So if we start where the game starts, we'll start on pistol round. And the first major issue is people just aren't buying. I see sometimes up to seven players in the server will have nothing bought on pistol round. That's a huge mistake. You need to be able to recognize if your opponents have armor or not by the amount of blood they show when you hit them. If you can recognize this and you hit someone in the body, always finish them off in the body. It takes three shots to the stomach to finish someone off with a USP and four to the chest, four to the chest as well with the Glock while they're being aim punched. They're not really going to be able to hit you very effectively while their aim is up in the sky because they're getting shot so many times in the body. One of the other ways you can make sure you're winning a lot of pistol rounds is jumping around corners so that it's very hard to hit you in the head, thereby armor is is more important and making sure you've got the clown movement where you're moving left and right crouching up and down occasionally trying to make your head very hard to hit and if you're doing these things and your opponents don't have armor they're dead it they're just they're dead yeah they die crosshair placement is one of the most talked about things when it comes to ranking out of silver so i'll leave that a little bit later it's something that's already been covered quite often when it comes to gun rounds one of the things i noticed is spray control a lot of people have terrible spray control certainly it's something you want to be practicing as much as possible because unless you're scream you're going to need to shoot people in the body at the very least even to just finish them off if you have something like an m4 spraying really does come into factor a ton and i think it's under practiced in the lower ranks as compared to just raw aim as well i see people doing a few major issues with their spray first they spray at far too long range all you have to do to fix this is simply visualize the ranges in which you think spraying is appropriate and it's going to vary based on how good your spray is but still you should have a general idea i see a lot of people that will shoot before their recoil resets so i'll see them shoot they're thinking they're accurate and they're resetting their crosshair but the bullets are going up 50 feet into the sky like they're trying to take down a fighter jet really what you need to be doing is practicing and making sure that you know the exact time for your recoil to reset you can practice this with your movement as well as i often see people moving while they shoot and you can make sure you're going left right left right and shooting and stopping on a dime here counter strafing to try to make sure your aim is on point one of the smaller things that i've noticed people have issues with when you're counter strafing, you don't hold D and then press A. You hold D and then let go of it and tap A. That might be something you already know, but I've seen a ton of people actually didn't know that. Now, when it does come to your aim, one of the things I've noticed is that silvers actually have okay aim. It's not their worst trait. One of the traits that I've seen very commonly that causes bigger issues is shooting before your crosshair is on your opponent. Spray control is pretty easy once you tag someone as they can't really move around to get away from you. But if you start shooting before your crosshair is on your opponent and your opponent is strafing, especially with a pistol or an SMG, it's gonna be really tough to track them before you hit them that first one or two times. Make sure when you're practicing, you're ensuring you're only shooting once your crosshair is on your opponent and bring that into game, ensuring you're not making some crazy whiffs like this. Now I did mention crosshair placement and at the most obvious level you want to keep it on your opponent's head. You want to make sure when you're running around the map it's at head level. You can visualize where an opponent's head would be if they were at an angle. But you also want to make sure you're not just aiming at the wall near the angle. This is something I see quite often. People know it should be at head level but instead of looking here they're looking here. That's bad crosshair placement as well. You know, if it's far enough into the wall, it's almost just as bad as aiming at the feet in a different way. Make sure it's out from the corner where opponents actually could be and at the head level. Now, if we rotate over to positioning, I think it's very important that you play CT as a CT. I see a ton of people in silver play CT as if it's a T side emulator, as if they're playing a hostage map or something. Uh, you actually want to be defending the bomb site, you know, hold angles. And if you are going to be pushing, make sure you're doing so for a reason off of calls or off of a good push that is well timed. And make sure if you are pushing, you're not simply wide swinging 
every angle. I have a dedicated video on this as well, but you want to make sure when you're peeking angles, if you want to get the best chance of killing your opponent, peek out and stop counter strafe at every angle your opponents are likely to be, and that way you actually shoot them more effectively. If you're swinging every corner like a race car, you're really making it very easy for your opponents to kill you, and you're making it very tough for you to actually get frags yourself. As well as playing spots like a CT, you want to try to play the same spot every round. I see silvers rotating around the map every time they spawn anywhere else, they'll go to a new spot. Most games I see a player play pretty much every spot on the map. It really benefits you to continually play the same spot every round or at least most rounds a half because it allows you to actually learn the intricacies of the angle. What spots are good, what spots are bad, when you can and can't push, and how you should defend in general. All of those things are much easier to learn if you're continually playing the same spot. That's not to say you can't learn and improve at new spots, but try to make sure at least game to game, you're playing a lot of one angle so you can actually improve. Now, once you know the spots you can play as a CT, you now know some spots that might be good in after plants. I see a ton of people after the bomb is planted, they just continue pushing as if they're still trying to take an objective. You know, the reason you're aggressive on T side is because you need to take the bomb site to plant the bomb. But once the bomb's planted, the CTs need to take the bomb site to defuse the bomb. So you're now effectively the defender. And although a lot of the time CT side angles that are good aren't necessarily great on T side, if you're wondering where to play, that is a decent place to start. Especially on a map like Inferno, you know, a spot like Pit, great spot for CTs, great spot for T's. If you look at some CT angles that are effective, you can try and question yourself, is this good in an after plant? And sometimes the answer might just be yes. The final thing to bring up is utility. And I have a dedicated video on utility. I have probably several of them. Hey, this is Vuin, this is utility basics. And the, but you wanna be buying it. You're not saving for retirement here. When you're playing CS, you should be using your bank when you have the money because utility is incredibly effective. And when you do get utility, especially if you play the same spot every round, you're gonna have a decent idea how to use it. And if you go to the same spot on T side that you play on CT, you're gonna have an even better idea. But you wanna just keep in mind the basic reasons these pieces of utility are important. Smokes are great for delaying and they're great for giving you time to set up. Something like smoking off B tunnels after you molly it is great because your opponents now can't know if you're on the left side or the right side and it can allow your teammates in middle some time to fight around and then come back and support you later. The other way you can use smokes is to isolate angles. Something like smoking off truck side to attack arch in middle on inferno. Very effective way to use smokes because now they can't shoot you in the back very effectively. I mean it's obvious right? But it's not from what I've seen. Mollies are also really effective at blocking Maui. Stop. Maui says sub to the Patreon. If you want more content, if you want demo reviews, sub to the Patreon. Right, buddy? Yeah. Molotovs are really great for allowing you to set up in spots that are more of a race or that you really need support in. So a spot like long A where you need to spend your best spawn is the only one that beats the T's here. You try and send your best spawn to Molly it then he can come out and fight with the rest of the teammates as they've now had time to catch up and the opponents are gonna have trouble getting through that molly without smoking themselves off. Molotovs are also very effective at cutting off half of an execute. If your opponents are doing something like hitting A on Inferno from apartments and truck, you can molly off apartments and focus on truck. And by doing so, your opponents have no way of pushing through it like they might with a smoke. With nades and flashes, those are a little bit more self-explanatory, so I'll leave that to you. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this helped, and I hope to see you in the next one.